Okay. And we're back in the room once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once more to the Cayman Show, the show that keeps on giving, the show where things just keep getting better. And today, ladies and gentlemen, you know what's coming. There's no exception to that rule. With these two gentlemen, things on the Cayman Show can indeed only get better. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. I give you Peter. I give you Al. D. Reem, welcome to the Cayman Show. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you here without the hiccup as well. Ah, yeah, it all went rather smoothly, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, smooth as a baby's bottom, shall we say. <laughs> like well, we, got, yeah, we, we got you in the end, gents, and what a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you so much for coming on. No, it's great fun. Thank you for having us. Good stuff, great stuff. Well, things have busied up again for yourselves. Obviously, the new album, Open Hearts, Open Minds, out now. New single, I Used to Believe in Love, out, I believe, on the 15th of October. Correct me if I'm wrong. Around then. Yeah. It, it, these don't make a difference anymore. Oh, excellent stuff, excellent. Well, so we'll go with that anyway, but obviously you've had eight top 40 hits through the years. You're still going. Let's talk a little before we go on to the new bits and pieces, which we will inevitably lead on to. Let's talk a little nostalgia first, if we may. So people yeah. are going to want to know, first of all, some of the roots of d -Ream. So basically, I guess, gents, over to you if, you, if I may. How, where, when, and why did it all start for you guys? If you can get some of them initial seeds back in the day. Okay. Alan, you want me to go? I, I don't know why, but um, how is how's easier, definitely. Yeah. Just, you know, Pete and I were in London. We're not from London, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm Scottish, Pete's Welsh. We, we'd moved there through diff different... I'm, I'm not Welsh, I'm Irish. Oh, I'm you're Welsh. Irish. You're Welsh, <laughs> you're Welsh. <laughs> Sorry, we're, Peter. We're all Celts, all right, boys? We're I all Celts. We've, we're, with the three of us, there's almost a joke. Uh, well, that's we, it. Yeah, we're, <laughs> where's, like, where's that English guy? <laughs> walking, yeah, I know. Yeah, he'll be the he'll be the butt of the joke. But I think we're we're the lead, aren't we? I mean, we walk absolutely. Into a bar, yeah. we walk into a bar, and we're looking for that English bloke. That's it. We're the lead roles. We, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna wee all over him. <laughs> that kind of that, that's what it was. We were looking for a bar. Well, Pete was looking for a bar, and he kept went to Wardour Street in London, where I was playing. I was DJing, basically. Yeah. yeah. And then. And yeah, and he, he, I was playing house music. I was running night and sort of nightclubs and DJing. And Pete was come from Ireland with his, uh, his guitar, his guitar on his back, you know, and then um, I tried like that. And he, and he, and I think he just wanted, to, you know, he had some new students and he wanted to try and get, you know, into this sort of the dance sort of thing. I didn't make music, so it seemed like a good idea for me to go to the studio. It's just an excuse to get out of my house, basically, and you know, and go and sit with someone that wasn't my wife. So <laughs> excellent. So I went round the house with them um, biscuits and beer, and we, um, yeah, we. Pete just said, "I've got some music," and I, I thought that's nice. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, and just started just said, "Let's lay some beats down." To which Pete looked at me as like I was mental. Why would you do that? And then, you know, and then, and then we, we sort of sort of gelled really. We, the two sort of paths to dance and indie folk we're going to do all crossed, and we started making some music. Well, like, I've been um, I've been chasing um, I've been going to various nightclubs and various places and. Um, I got wind of Al doing like a residence, a resident uh, at a place called the Brain in Water Street, like you said, and he managed to come over to the studio to help me just get sense of it because nothing I was doing was it was only approximating what was I was hearing in the clubs, and I really had something. Well, I, I didn't even think of you, you know, going to a DJ because you know um, I just never thought of it. But when, when you sit down and work with a DJ and they're they're like sort of, they think in a different way and you get this kind of insider knowledge so that's what happened we had my ability to, to write and perform and what have you and, and operate the equipment at least in the early days uh then combined with alan's kind of dance floor noose and he was playing me lots of records he was sending me things like um can you feel it remember those records italio house records uh, he used to make me mixtapes and he'd say make things sound like this and make things sound like that and that, that's where we kind of came together because it, it, it almost made it easier making music that way because we knew the sound we wanted we just had to get the sound right and Alan, Alan and I got, got, got rolled our sleeves up and, and jumped in. The, the actual track he came over to work on was You're the Best Thing. Um, and I remember clearly uh, making me make the kick drum last 16 bars on its own. And I thought, <laughs> well, that's like watching paint dry. Who's going to listen to this? And he said, well, it's not really for you. It's for other DJs so they can lock on from the previous tune. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing you get when, when you, the, the, the different, the two sort of yin and yang of the knowledge came together in that one, uh, you know, balance. That, that was us. Fantastic stuff. The rest is history, so they say. 
Well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's history now. It's <laughs> it years. is a DNA. <laughs> and we're, we're still making history, gents. We're still making history. Yeah. Uh, so, so what about the name? Who, who came up with the name? Um, uh, who, who, dis- who decided on the colon? And has that caused you with the World Wide Web any difficulty yes. at all? <laughs> yes, certainly. Um, I, think, yeah. I think, yeah, I think we were just... Alan was mentioning uh, uh, the Dream Academy, and I thought we should be like the Dream Dream Boys, like the Strip Act. <laughs> and then, um, and we just there was a lot of bands around at the time. If you remember, D Influence and D Light and M People and K Class, and we thought, well, we'll just separate the D from the R, and the colon went in there. And little did we know that that was an illegal character in HTML. I mean, if Tim Berners Lee had been my, you know, in law, I would have found out some inside knowledge. But uh, as it turns out. We shot ourselves in the foot. <laughs> As usual. As usual. <laughs> ah, well, it's all worked out well in the end. I, I see yeah. it, you know, you've got a presence online. There's a little dash there, which we can, you know, fit in as and when we can work with Yeah, we can work with a dash, right, boys? As as and when we need to. Yeah. Um, is is there any truth in the rumor that there was a, a tribute band as well to Dream? Uh, oh, God, yeah. at, at the height of our fame when when we were number one for, for too many weeks. Uh, in Derry, they they don't where I'm from in the north uh, northwest of Ireland. They don't they don't let you get ahead of yourself. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. And uh, so one of my oldest friends, a fella called uh, Sean Campbell, he formed uh, a band called D Redful. Okay. And uh, their their signature tune was uh, "Fish Can Only Get Battered." <laughs> So, quality yeah, so, I, I wasn't sure if that was an urban myth that no, was that's an actual no, fact is it he yeah did, he did really well out of it and uh, i am speaking to him now but it's taken me a few years i, I was gonna i was gonna ask that was my next question i was leading into you you are still on speaking terms, We're on then, speaking yeah? terms. yeah i can't hold the grudge that long Fantastic. 25 years you know ah oh, brilliant brilliant it's, it's not worth holding grudges gents is it not uh, so, so you've had eight top forty hits throughout the years. Things could only get better. Uh, obviously, being the, being the most successful hit number one, I believe, was in ninety four or ninety three. Yes, you know, it was the best thing was the first one to come through. Yeah. I was under the impression we'd had twelve top forties on, and I don't know if you remember. Sorry? But, um, yeah, I thought it was twelve. But maybe it's twelve. Maybe it's twelve. You, you, you guys would know. Name them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's <laughs> the problem. I think it's I think it's eight or nine, but it might be. Two. I don't know. I don't no, think there were, there were three hits off the second album. I think, I think there's um, the sub have been hit several times, therefore making more. But I think eight <laughs> yeah, tracks, yeah. Hit twelve top forty appearances. Let us so say that's it. Yeah, yeah. So eight tracks. Yeah. So so my re my research wasn't totally null and void. So just the uh, just the finer points. Yeah. So. <laughs> that, our brains aren't quite there with the. Yeah. Oh, that's so but no, it's, um, the, the first breakthrough track was your you're the best thing. I think went to like number seventy two in the. Um, national charts and we worked really hard with that but we didn't really have the mixes at that point and and we worked for another six months on it until we got um i think we did the d remix was essential tuned uh by pete tong mm. one week and then that that just lit the touch paper and the week after that um the sasha mix came out and he essential tuned that and that was as far as i know the only consecutive yeah. essential tune he's ever and had then, and then mm. we got signed by warner brothers which Gave us yeah, a bit. that was the that was the beginning of the end. <laughs> what, what, what the thing about a big label is they they see a pretty face like mine back in the day, and they just go right straight into the the kids' uh, television shows and all the rest yeah. of it. But the you know, um, if if we had been a bit uglier, like uh, uh, I won't mention who. Like, no, <laughs> oh, um, go on. <laughs> our Chemical Brothers, for example, or or Leftfield, you know, right we, we would have had, we wouldn't have been marketed as such. So um, we would have had chance to sort of grow a bit more within the clubs and then move out of that, but. It's hard. The thing about the Dream is because it's, these big songs are there, people can't get their head around it. They just think it's a pop act. I mean, Alan calls it a pop act, much to my dismay. But, um, you know, I, I just think it's totally standalone what it does. It, it strode the clubs and the charts at the same time. Mm. So and there's not much that does that, you know? Definitely. Yeah, well, it does. It incorporates three genres, really, doesn't it? It incorporates indie, pop, dance. Yeah. Um, so, and it, back in the day, at least, it was yeah. revolutionary. You know, it was it was something new, something yeah. different, something exciting. So well, we were we were in a continuum. There's Alan says like he came off the back of the acid house scene. I I I, I missed that. I just joined when, to be honest, perfect timing because it was big songs, soaring vocals, pianos, strings, all the kind of sweet stuff that I that I really love as a musician. It's got hard, lots of harmonic content, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and the sort of shapes of things. Uh, and, and then structure. So I, I just fell, fell into it just at the right time. And that's, I think we, we partnered up at the right time. And 
and that's why we, we I suppose we just uh, we were on the crest of a wave and we just rode it for those, those couple of years to get us up there yeah brilliant yeah. stuff excellent well things talking of the dance scene and that as well things can only get better back in the day it used to be you wouldn't think it to look at me now right but back in the day it used to be a happy hardcore raver and <laughs> there was a mix of things can only get better uh in the hardcore scene as well uh believe it or not they may have been taken from a a house track i'm not sure yeah, but yeah. i remember in dance planet uh yeah. go, going back a few years now right yeah. so it must have been uh, 96 97 i want to say there yeah. was a, a mix of things could only get better and we had mc sugar then singing it leading into it it was you can walk my path you <laughs> can wear my shoes you really? can talk like me and be an angel too. And then the beat will come in and he go, really? you can walk my path, you can wear Alan, my shoes. Yeah. We've got we've got to hear this. I, I was ready there for a minute for you to tell like, me that, yeah. that you played the original plus eight. So I was going to say you're one of our plus eights. Uh, they just come in. All of the feedback were coming. It sounds great at plus eight. We're going, who's going to play that at plus eight? There we go. <laughs> hey, man. Well, there it is. But yeah, Dance Planet, DJ Shoto, I believe, a Japanese DJ. And uh, you had MC Sugar singing D Ream, things could only get better. Oh, that sounds like a bootleg I'd love to get hold of. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. I'm sure I have the cassette somewhere. If I can dig it out in the garage or whatnot, Brilliant. I that's love going on, That's going on our Hall of Fame, that one. Excellent stuff. <laughs> and, and what better place for it to stand, you know? Uh, yeah, I just, just wanted to share that with you, really, gents. So, oh, uh, yeah, the, so, so that song back Isn't in it the day. It's interesting, though. It's interesting, though, that um, you, you'll remember the lyric and you remember the melody rarely do we sit down uh, as musicians and fans of music and, and talk about a bass line, uh, you know, or, or a drum line. Mm. Um, and it's just the human content. That's, that's the thing that, that sticks with us. And I think when, when we started working, Alan, I used to stand beside the DJ booth, rather, rather boring. Instead of chasing the girls, I was um, uh, up at the DJ booth watching what was going on. And, and I could see the moments where people would stick their hands in the air and and that was a breakdown. I was going, what, what, how does this work? You know, because mm. no one, none of us knew what it was. We were just in it. Yeah. You know, and with the benefit of hindsight, you can look and you can analyze the whole thing. But we were just going so fast, so fast forward that it was hard to get hold of what was going on. It was really heady. And uh, I watched that stuff happen. And I thought, this is the kind of stuff that we want to do. But I don't want to be in the middle of the night. I want to be at the end of the night. I want to be the last record he plays. Yeah. Uh, so when people go home, they've got that human element in their head. They've got that melody. That's and, it. Uh, that's what that's what we were aiming for. That's why best things got those strings. They're supposed to to send the hairs on your back, and the same thing with the piano. On things going to get better, and this chorus happening. It's it's all designed. Well, designed. It's just it's all meant to to get you um, tripping, basically. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and and it works still to this day. Though that song, you know, it's like I'm in a in a tribute band. I am. We do eighties and nineties. We tried and we failed, all right, guys. We're we we're, we're not D Ream, all right. Let's just put that out there. We are not. We tried, things could only get better. Ah, oh, so, sorry, sorry to break it to you, gents. We we're, we're not D Ream. We're, we're just the Breakfast Club. But uh we we tried to do it. And uh it's, yeah, it's, it was too high. So kudos on the vocal as well there. <laughs> You know, you can drop the key. That's what I do. When yeah, I, play. So I, I think I did as well, but uh, it, was, it was still a little as as it as it goes on. It's like ah, oh, nah, I can't quite get there, you know. But next rehearsal, I'll come down and give you a hand. All right. Yeah, give, give us a shout, man. It'd be great. Oh, It'd be yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll have a cheeky I'll job. Even with FaceTime and see if we can give it a hand. Excellent stuff. Let's make it happen, gents. You did it your like first, ladies white. and gentlemen. Sounds great to me. I'm all over that. All right. Let's okay. let's do some training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so while while we're in the bubble of nostalgia then, gents, it would be rude of me not to ask about uh, young Brian Cox. Uh, so Brian was once, he once played keyboard for yourselves, yeah? So so what's what's the story of Brian uh, joining the band and then Brian leading the, ba leading well, the band? Brian um, came to us because we I was heading around the country at, um, doing two and three shows a night and our driver got sick and he, he deputized Brian to take on the job. And his very words to Brian were, look, I've been doing this band all summer. They're fairly busy. I don't think they're going anywhere, but you might as well have a crack at driving <laughs> around. <laughs> so, so Brian ends up being our driver. It was actually his summer job, right? Okay. So uh, he's uh, taken a week time out from, um, he was doing his uh, studying for his professorship there at Manchester University. But if you know science people, they're, they're not really very practical people. Um, I mean, he, he could barely make a cup of tea and uh, he certainly couldn't read a map. 
And when it came to your roundabout, we used just to say, look, my brain's dry and you might as well pick a number. And half the time we would get to the shows and some of the times we wouldn't, you know. So this got a bit much after a while. And we realized he could play, you know, we got on really well with him and he could play keyboards. And I thought, you know, I need a keyboard player. Why don't you play keyboards and we'll get another driver in? So that's how he got into the Right, band. okay. That's, that's, yeah. that's an interesting way in. <laughs> yeah. So I, I gave him my Dexter Wong, um, had a lovely um, waistcoat and put him in that. He had his long hair from his days in Dare, you know, with uh, with all the rockers and stuff. And he just fitted in really, really well. And, and no, I mean, the thing about Brian is he, he's just so lovely. He's, he's just like he is in, in real life. I remember one time getting off the coach, he... Um, he got off the coach and, and, and he got off and he had, um, I got off and I had a book on Napoleon. I was reading history at the time. And uh, Levain, our backing singer, had a, had a, a magazine, OK Magazine. Yeah. And uh, then Brian came off with this book, which literally would read to you and me the same way, no matter which end of the book we opened. He was he was right out there. And I used to say to him, I think I've played my part in your career insofar as uh, you got to learn how to, uh, to explain very complicated things to very stupid people on my tour coach. And he says, I'll have to give you that, Pete. <laughs> fair play yeah. so, so so how did he come to to wave goodbye to you guys um i was going out to tour australia and he had to finish his degree and he came to me he was really um crestfallen he said um oh look pete you know i, I can put, to pause this degree and come out with you and i really want to come or i can finish it off and and i'm really worried you know, I said, look, brian if you won't lose your place in the band when we come back and if it's still working then have your place but uh, go and finish your degree and so we so we did and when we came back we were finished i think within six months or a year i can't remember but we'd finished with the label anyway yeah um, warners had pissed me off so i just blew the plug <laughs> on it so yeah i got to that point at least i got to that point with warners but brian still remained a lifelong friend I, we've been at each other's birthday parties um he was the best man at my first wedding you know we still we still speak, you know, fairly regularly. Yeah, uh, excellent yeah. stuff. Good, good. That's nice to know. That's, that's nice to know. I, I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't sure if there was any frostiness or anything. No, so. no, not at all. No, love him to bits and really proud. I did go to one of his shows though, and again, um, I'm ha- twenty minutes in and he's gone right over my head. I can't blow you away, like. <laughs> I just no, not just blow me away, but I can't keep up with him. I don't. Yeah. He goes so far into this time and space continuum thing. I'm that's like, it. I'm gone. Yeah, I've, I've watched that. I watched an interview we did with Joe Rogan, and uh, I was much like yourself. I was like, "All right, okay, trying to keep up, trying to keep up, trying to keep up." Yeah, no, I'm it. gone. Yeah. I'm in outer space myself yeah. now. But, uh, came, this is the best one. What do you think about this? Uh, there was like four thousand people in this hall, and I'll tell you now, at least half of them weren't smarter than me. Yeah, <laughs> they were just there to see Brian on stage, right? That's it. Exactly. <laughs> it speaks volumes, doesn't it? Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So your last album, then we're looking at. About ten years ago, your last album. Yeah, shocking. Yeah, so it, between then and now, what's been going on in the world of Dream, in the world of you guys, uh, both musically and personally, I guess. Lots of things. We've just, you know, like 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 everyone else, well, we've had relationships, failed relationships, etc. Kids. Yeah. You know, Pete's moved house several times. I've moved house several times. Uh, moved moved here, you know, and just. We were doing stuff and then we just had to stop and take some time out really to yeah. <clears throat> just just to get on with our lives really and then I, i've got my own our own night sort of parties and stuff and then i have my own little dance labels and pete was teaching at college teaching songwriting stuff at college and stuff and just yeah we were still doing music at the time but it was um yeah we weren't as intense as we have been in the last couple mm. of years where we really went for it with this album well i suppose mm. i think last year really you know, we were, we'd, we'd done quite a bit and then lockdown yeah. happened and we got, after eight months or so, we just thought, right, we're doing this. And we yeah. I flew over to Ireland. Pete's moved to Ireland now. So I sort of flew over there, stayed for like 10 days, two weeks at a time. And we just worked really hard and just got on with got on with that. It's, yeah, but like everyone else, you know, you get on with your life, don't you? Especially if you've, yeah. if you've got a new partner, especially, you can't be off all the time, like seeing yeah. another partner. No, I'm just I'm just going to see like the third person in the relationship. <laughs> Look, it's, it's not it's not good to spend more time with them than your new part so you do have to do a, you know you, you have to give yourself yeah. to your, your yeah. part bit, rather, bit, of, oh, bit of a balance in that bit to, of balance i managed to after the last album in, in memory of um i got divorced so i moved out but i stayed being dad so i stayed in the vicinity and i got some um i got lots of work up at a college just lecturing in in uh, and then uh, and then i actually wrote the degree course on songwriting and production up there oh wow awesome. i really enjoyed well it was amazing because it, it means I wasn't talking about dream or myself. I was working with kids who were who I could pass on my knowledge to in a way that would 
that was about their work, not about me. It's just about how their songs were. So I kind of went back to school myself. I learned a lot about like uh, structures and all sorts of things about, um, you know, how to balance records. I, I really went into it and I, I almost like, um, you know, when you, uh, in the black belt, you go and have a white belt again. It was one of those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, I would. felt very, um, I was very honored actually. And I, I got to work with these kids and it was brilliant because they, I, I was able to bring some of them on and, and they really, I got a lot of uh, respect and love back from them. And I thought that was a great place for me to be for a while. And then in 2015, Alan and I started sort of um, calling each other and talking about the, the new album. And we started working on a song called Meet Me at Midnight, which, mm. which uh, ended up being a, a weight around my neck for a long time because we could never quite get it to sit. Um, so it took about five years to put that one together. And it's funny because when you're not with a major and you're not having to knock them out, you can, you can really put the love in and, and, and like a good wine, let it mature properly. You're not mm. rushing it. Um, you're finessing it in, in a way, you know, to within an inch of its life. And sometimes that's, that's just what that means. And, and, and that's what happened. Even life, as Alan says, life, life's complicated. I've had quite a, you know, a personal life to get, get past thing. You know, we've lost family members and all the rest of it. So, you know, you're just dealing with life as it comes. Um, but I'm finding a good place. I met my new wife in India, in Goa. Excellent. And uh, yeah, we uh, five or six years ago now, and we were married about two, three, and we moved over to Ireland, which is where her family's from and mine. And um, I've come back to, <laughs> bizarrely, now I'm caring for an 85-year-old who's my dad. So I'm a part-time carer for him. Wow, fair play. Uh, and yeah, I know it's, it's, it's a thing. It's at least I can do that, but I'm missing my kids now, you know, because of the COVID restrictions that mm. I've only seen them twice a year, but that's just the way life is. In fact, it's, it's real fuel for writing as well, this sort of stuff and very humbling dealing with people who are basically geriatric. You, you have to learn a different kind of patience and you have to see your place in the, in the, in the, the queue. Mm. I know it sounds harsh, but it really does sort of ground you in a way that, you know, you, you can be in that bubble with like Michael Jackson or, um, or you name them, anyone, and they're having smoke blown up their arse and they're, you know, they don't even know the price of a loaf of bread. Mm. And that's very easy to get there, you know, and have yes people all around you feeding you uh, all the, all the yes words. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not a place that we occupy very well. In fact, Alan, Alan is the only man I know who says more no to me than, than anyone else <laughs> on planet earth. So that's, that's the kind of nature of our relationship. Well, that's so we're keeping him grounded out. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Good man. We've all got to have one. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, you you touched a little about it there, then all right. So so let's talk about the the reactivation then. How, how did this come to to fruition exactly then? Well, as as Peter was just saying, it's 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 always been there. It's just like as we've just you know, it's only maybe a couple of years ago when we thought right, we started um, meet me midnight. It'd been kind of left, mm. and then we just thought right, we're going to get back on this. And then we because Peter was still in London at the time, mm. and, we, and we did we. We started working on other things. So I, I know there's one tune we were going to do something else, and I had an idea of a piano thing, which ended up as Emperors of the Night, which people. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. he was like, the minute I gave had this idea, people said, "Well, let's go, on, let's ditch everything, <laughs> let's ditch everything we're doing, and get on with this one." And next thing, you know, within a couple of days, we've got all, you know, we had the basis of a tune on that one as well. And it, so it just, and then we knew we, the album was forming then, so we just we got on with it, and then. Then obviously lockdown happened and it was just a, a little, it, the brakes were put on a little bit and we just, you know, when, when we got our heads down to say, right, we're doing this, it came, it came, it's quite good. We worked really hard. I have to say, mm. I've yeah. never worked on music like that for a lot, well, for a long, long time. Like getting no, up, really, You spur each other on, you get up and you just, you're doing music, you know, 24 seven apart from sleeping. And mm -hmm. luckily like Ruth's a top chef. So she was cooking for us. We didn't have to worry about anything. It was like a proper lock, lock in rather than lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. And so, so we got a real focus on, and and we thought then, well, we're not going to approach major labels with it. What we want to do with it is we want to put it out ourselves. And and so you're in that whole world of like, okay, now we've got to hire everybody and all the rest of it. That that's okay, you know. What can I say? I don't I don't need to feel like that. I have to prove by getting into the charts again. I, I think that's that's an impossible ask, especially on the marketing budget we've got. But at the same time, we can still go about our business making what we think is is something that's worthy. It keeps us certainly keeps us occupied, and it, the feedback from from our fan base has been absolutely uh, astonishing. And, and, and the reviews from the reviews, well, yeah, have been. I have to say, it's quite scary actually. They're hundred percent of like absolutely positive reviews. You normally get one, one, one cad who yeah. likes, likes to just turn around <laughs> and say, "You're crap." Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. it's been a, and it's even a rock mag giving us a really clear glowing review and stuff. And it, yeah, it's been quite, it's been, it's been heartening. But... So, so, so heartening, very heartening. Yeah. And as Alan said, you know, it's a, I think we've really made a record that has a conscience. It also has that uplifting thing that we're associated with. And we've gone back to using more sort of strings and pianos and stuff, but with a, a, a sort of a really contemporary feel and, you know, how fat we've made the beats and, and how full we've made the, the songs and, and the, the choruses. It's just, it's just classic us. If that makes any sense. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, total sense. Total sense. Yeah. I, I noticed is what you're talking about the strings that I noticed you've brought the guitar into the band and that as well now. So when when did that happen? And oh. have you always played guitar, Peter, as well? I, I I was in an indie band for several years before I met Alan, and, and we were signed to to Mother Records, U 2s sort of homegrown label. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Our, we label mates of like Tuesday Blue and Hot House Flowers and people like that. So we came to London with that band and, and I was playing lead uh, in that band. And when, when it didn't work out, um, I just found myself sleeping on friends' floors for a couple of years while I got my crap together and finally had my own place and started building up a little studio. So then, I mean, there's always guitars in the album that I've played. And um, I just don't, I don't start put my foot in the monitor and try and be Jimmy Page. That's mm. just like... The last just, album we did, didn't we? We used a lot more. more a lot more of it. That's my fault for telling people to get a kind of guitars. Let's show you what we're about. It, it makes it great. We do back, back into the fray live. It's just great because it's I play everything on the guitar instead of sitting on the synth. Now, my, my, my keyboard chops are, are questionable, uh, and I blame Logic for that because it makes you lazy. But uh, the thing about the guitar is you can't you can't fake it. You just got to be able to play it. And I, it. I've got a range of styles from from indie to rock to to funk that I can just call on. And I know all the shapes and and you know I've been copying Nile Rodgers for years, so that pretty much covers most of house music. Fantastic, <laughs> yeah, job done. Yeah. Jobs are good then. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Well, let's talk obviously about the, the new album. Let's talk about the new single. So the new album, Open Hearts, Open Minds, uh, that's out now, available now. Uh, mm -hmm. The new single as well, I Used to Believe in Love, out, I believe, 15th of October, around there. October. Uh, yeah, October time. What, what can we expect or, or what can people expect if they've not yet listened to, to the album and, and such? What can people expect from the album? What can people expect from the single? I'd say it's more, it's, I think it's, if you like Dream in the Past, it's, it's a more mature, slightly older version of Dream. You know, we, we, we've, we've been 30 years, really, since we mm -hmm. did the album. It's Amazing. A long time. And we've, you know, we've, we've, we've honed our skills and musically and everything. We've learned a lot and did proper pop songs. I mean, Pete doesn't like the word pop so much, but they are mm -hmm. just as songs. Some are dance, some are a bit balearic, some of this, but the, the proper pop songs are, they're, the structure is as a pop a pop song. I think the writing's good when we've had when some of the songs are nonsensical, as a lot of songs are, in the sense that they're not stories, you know. But the, the songs that are good, I think they're the best songs we've ever written, personally. Awesome. But you know, but they, they all every song works to what it is. I think. I think it's a, I just think it's a great pop album from start to finish. I play it, and I, it's the first album that I've ever played of ours, anyway, or many. I just play all the way through, then play again. It's under 40 minutes long. It doesn't, it's not too taxing on the brain. And it just, you want to hear it again because the, the good rhythms, it's, it's positivity, hope. It's it's just a great album. There you awesome go. stuff. That's awesome. Scale. That'll great. do it. That'll do it. We, <laughs> we'll trim that bit down in the little teaser as well, gents. All right. Brilliant. Excellent stuff. I, I understand you're doing uh, like hard copies as well, vinyls, bits and pieces like that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Love a bit of vinyl, gents. Vinyl Love a bit CD. of vinyl. Vinyl and CD. Yeah. We're old school because we, we need we need that in our life. I still buy a lot a lot of vinyl, so I just can't help myself. I need my missus keeps telling me to not. She doesn't tell me to stop. She just looks at me knowingly whenever whenever at the pack the postman arrives. Ar ar <laughs> yeah. Stops it there. And That's I, the I, DJ I, in you, isn't it? You're I, always yeah, going to buy vinyl. I don't even I buy things, and because they're on, it takes so long to come because they've bought them pre order. I forget what I've bought. Yeah, I've got a few box sets yeah. about to arrive, about to land on the door soon. But yeah. I love it, and it, a, it must be like a lucky dip on your letter box, is it? <laughs> no, I, I, I always say it's, it's, this is this is my um, what's it, um, what's the word? The my, it's like I put it in a bank, there's all this in the bank, it's all all accruing interest. That's it's brilliant, fantastic. all make money, definitely. That's what I tell her anyway. <laughs> Excellent stuff. So, so where can people get hold of these vinyls, these CDs? Where can people get hold of the album and the single, of course? Just they can go to our website, dream.co.uk. That's d underscore r e a m dot uk, and all the links are up there. We're on Twitter and um, and what have you, and and, and Instagram. Um, 
but it's, where you can get the links from there. It's basically Bandcamp or our own website. Now, we're not streaming because we think, well, we know that streaming's theft and, um, you know, we, we don't get paid anything for that. Mm. And we'd rather just appeal to our fans and appeal to people directly to support us because we can't live on air. And with the, the decimation of the live music industry and the rise of streaming, uh, we're caught between a rock and a hard place and uh, we, we just can't, we can't exist in there. So we're hoping for the whole thing to, you know, pay for itself, wash its face um, so that we can maybe do another one later on and hopefully do some more gigs coming up in the new year. But that's all we can really, really hope for. But I mean, Alan had a terrible experience on his label with a check that he received after getting quarter of a million plays on some of the streaming services and it was something like 13 quid or 21 quid. I can't remember. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. It's just woeful. It's woeful. Jeez. And um, I think from what I understand, the algorithm changes the, the more known you are. So, for example, I've been told that things can only get better. Um, and best thing is generating something like oh, a million yeah. plays uh, hmm. a year and earning the label four month, grand. A month, Peter. A oh, month, sorry. Okay, month. sorry, I stand correct. And then earning the label four grand. So you can see it's a totally different thing for when you know you, you have the major success to win but we're almost like back to being an indie band again we're not yeah. with the major so we're just asking people to to dig you know and for the price of a couple of coffees to have something really special which is a, a signed bespoke piece of art you know that's mm. what it is you get the cd or you get the download that goes with the cd and that's i see a lot of artists doing this now you know right from image and heat to um, you know uh, the water boys and stuff like that they're all even um doves are doing it as well you know you, you just you get that thing that's directly from them that 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 that's been signed so if you if you buy an artwork from you know say damien hurst it, it's like a limited edition print or something it's the same as that and that's yeah. that's where we're at you know it's not a non-fungible token uh, it's I, a real bloody thing I, that you I own more personal and, and from the band than us as we have all the stuff in my garage so it all gets taken to the post office by me as well fantastic so hey. from, and occasionally i've finished. seen him posting He's gone around to people's houses and given them a kiss as well. I have to do that. Hey, you it's should it. You're first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I, a man hug. You get a free man hug if you know some people. If I'm in the if yeah. vicinity, get yeah. the album and get a man hug and a photo for the for him. The only way I can get affection from him these days is if I order one of my own LPs. From <laughs> Perfect. Him. Hey, by any by any which way, right? <laughs> Brilliant any, stuff. I, after fifty, I'm not so fussy. Ah, there we are. There we are. All good. All good. So that's that's the album. That's that's the, the CDs, the vinyls. Brilliant vinyls. I think you hit the nail on the head there when you use the word art as well. Uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for vinyl. I am myself as well. I love it. It's just that it is artwork, basically. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you could just I've bought vinyl before now, not even knowing what was inside. You know, it's just like, oh, that's a lovely cover, you know, and it's, it's like fantastic. Well, our front yeah. cover is actually it's it's a piece of art because it's one of Peter's friends who's an artist and locally mm. and she even painted it for she painted us for it yeah our designer to do sort of go around it so there you go brilliant stuff yes i was looking at it earlier on this look managed to make me look like freddie mercury on the top left but you know that that'll have to do yeah hold, hold it up again there peter peter talk to us about it so um her name's Sinead gormley jackson she's a neighbor of mine she's known for doing her own sort of like a gothic pop art thing mm. and she wanted to paint me and i said do better than that could you do me and alan and and she had this thing called uh, like a continuum. What yeah. did she call it? Uh, infinite yeah. time or something. So they we're always kind of doing this loop. And then we looked at it and then we said, that's like, I could be like the Raymond review bar. So we'll put some neon in here. Yeah. And it more or less looks like, like it's us, you know, that is super something, cool, of the, though. something of the night. And then we've got a gatefold. Oh, thing, wow. Which is Alan spending more money. Lyrics. Fantastic. So you do that and you get the lyrics on the inside. Ah, wicked, wicked. Old and school and new school, beat in hand in hand. It's just, it's fabulous. I love having it. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like it I've looks, got something. Yeah, I've seen I've seen it online, but now you've held it up there. I can see more detail in it and everything as well. It looks fantastic. Brilliant. It's a fantastic thing to open. And you know that 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 um almost uh what, what they call it in, in, in the church, you know, when they do go through the ritual mm. of Praying. lifting it, looking at it, pulling it out and you, you know how to hold vinyl by the, the center and the edge That's and it. just getting the dust off and putting it on and that crackle just as it happens it's just it's just it's just that's how music i've always experienced it and then that's why i love doing it doing it again with our stuff so definitely may be continue you know and i don't maybe it'll die out with this alan i don't know no no no, no. that's that's brilliant man that's just... hope it doesn't because i need to empty my garage 
<laughs> yeah, is that a also, euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> steady, steady. <laughs> So, so we've I talked to about clean, box. <laughs> clean, clean, clean It don't have to be squeaky. Just clean ish will do. <laughs> just clean, clear it out. Clear clean ish, yeah. Uh, so we've talked about the album. We talked about the single. You touched earlier on about gigs. Can we expect on the back of the album to see some touring going on? If so, where can we expect to see you? When can we expect to see you? <clears throat> cough, cough, <coughs> Cardiff. Yes. Hopefully, we, we'll we'll we, go wherever we want. A... Us. That's I think that's the. Um... The main thing it's just getting people to boot the gigs it's been we so lost a, so we lost the 30 day tour this year um in in march due to covid so that, yeah that, yeah and we're, we're hoping to well let's see what happens because i think the thing is everyone's so so afraid now the promoters are you know they've been thrown under a bus and how do you how do you get insurance how do you get you know, all of this stuff it's still hanging mm-hmm. in the air and it's a still level of uncertainty for everybody so we need to get back to stop being afraid and we need to get back to normal and then i think hopefully then this whole live thing will blossom again because it's the only place i think that other than making music in the album that we can um get a chance to get out there and jump around and entertain people and, um, it. definitely there's no there's no accounting for live music there's no substitute in my eyes for live no, music no, it was vibe. fantastic it's a great vibe yeah. and we, we've got a we've got a full live band i mean when, if the mute the, all the samplers stop and the, the electricity fails my band can play on <laughs> mm. excellent hey there we are winner Keep winner going. chicken dinner <laughs> 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 brilliant stuff well before we wrap up then gents is there anything we've missed out that you want to get in there any plugs shout outs acknowledgements anything else at all i don't think we've got we, we've covered everything we, we're just happy to people are willing to speak to us so we can get the message out about the new album and just hope that everyone loves it basically excellent yeah. stuff excellent stuff well uh, well i echo well, that gents thank you brilliant you stuff well, i wish i wish you all the very best with the album i wish you all the very best with the single I used to believe in love coming out in October time. Um, if you are coming to Cardiff, I'll be seeing you in Cardiff sometime as well. Uh, just, yeah, good. good luck. Keep rocking. Keep Man, doing you what you're doing. And uh, keep the faith. Thank keep the friends. faith, gentlemen. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, buy the album, buy the single, Thanks. treat yourselves. <laughs> Art is work. Remember that. D-Ream, everybody, on the Cayman Show. Thank you so much, gentlemen. God bless and good luck. Woohoo! Oh, that's a good look. Woohoo! <laughs>